Okay, so the last section for Module 1 or Unit 1 is on dimensional analysis. Um, this is the way that we use um, to convert between one unit or another. This is how I solve problems all semester long, and it's how I would recommend you do as well. So we're going to learn to perform calculations using dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis allows us to convert from one unit to another, and we're going to really get into a strategy for how to solve problems. Guys, I will tell you, um, when you are doing those practice problems that I say the exam is based on, you will struggle with some of them. What are they asking? How do you know? Um, it is important that you go through that struggle. Try not to post in the help forum too soon because when you do that, um, you really give yourself a disadvantage because you haven't been forced to uh, think through things. If you want to do well, you must allow yourself to struggle with a few of those problems first. I'm not saying spend two hours on them, but I'm saying give yourself a good five to seven minutes to really evaluate what they are asking and to try something. In that help forum, make sure you have put down what you've tried so that we can help you correct what you're doing. Okay, so dimensional ways, dimensional analysis is a way to convert from one unit to another. So we could go from grams to kilograms or something like that. You're going to always start with what's given and you're going to consider what we call conversion factors. Those conversion factors are basically equalities. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. 12 inches equals one foot. And so you can use these to help um, set it up so that units cancel. So for example, say we wanted to convert 1.75 inches to feet. We are given units of inches. We're looking for units of feet. So for me, I'd say I'm looking for inches. I'm going to feet. I can do this in one step. So I'm going to write one arrow. I can do this in one step because I know there's 12 inches in every foot. So I have 12 inches per foot. Now we can write this equality as fraction. Just like 2 over 2 is equal to 1, 12 inches over 1 foot is also equal to 1. So we could write it up as 12 inches over 1 foot or 1 foot over 12 inches. So with that in mind, we're going to set it up with inches over here. We have one arrow, one step, so I'm going to give one um, column. And because I want to cancel inches, I'm going to put inches down here. That means inches is on the top and on the bottom, allowing these to cancel and give us the units of feet. So when we do that, 1.75, you multiply by everything on top, you divide by everything on the bottom, so you have 1.75 times 1 divided by 12. In your calculator, you get something like that. This has three sig figs. These are from the same system of measurement, a foot or has 12 inches. So this is infinite, we don't care. Um, you say that or you could say it's exact. So we want three sig figs. So we're going to round this five up because of this eight. Oops, there we go. Convert 12.5 millimeters to nanometers. This is coming into play where you have to have certain units memorized. Go ahead and pause and try and set these up now. Once you've done that, you can hit play and you'll get more from it that way. We know we have millimeters. We're looking for nanometers. I have no idea how many millimeters are in a nanometer, but I know how many millimeters are in a meter and I know how many nanometers are in a meter, okay? 
So we can say, we can do this in two steps. I know that I have a thousand millimeters and one meter, or if you prefer, you can say 10 to the three millimeters and one meter. Over here, one meter is equal to 10 to the nine nanometers. Nanometers are very small, so there's a lot of them. Nano, nine, both start with N, maybe that'll help you memorize. Um, so when we set this up, I have two arrows, so I'm gonna have two um, columns. Now, I'm gonna put my 12.5 millimeters out here. We know every time, if I want to cancel my millimeters, millimeters goes down here. So every time we have a thousand millimeters, we have one meter. Then, every time we have one meter, canceling my meter, we get 10 to the nine nanometers. In my calculator, 12.5 times 10 to the nine divided by a thousand gives us 1.25 times 10 to the 7 nanometers. Millimeters canceled, meters canceled, that's what you should have. For down here, we have centiliters and we're looking for liters. We can do this in one step because we know there's 100 centiliters and one liter. One arrow means one step, one zero two zero centiliters. Every time we have one hundred centiliters, we have one liter. Centiliters cancels. This divided by one hundred. Hopefully you can kind of see where this is going. Um, you end up getting um, sorry, I don't know why this, there it goes. 10.20, three sig figs, infinite sig figs, or exact sig figs, oops, means that we have 10.2 liters. And that's a decimal. Okay, that's the same slide twice, sorry about that. If you wanted to determine the cost of a round trip drive from Norfolk to San Diego, uh, this is something I actually did a couple years ago, um, not from Norfolk to San Diego, but I wanted to drive home from college in Texas and I wanted to make sure I had enough gas money saved up. And so I looked up the information you need, which is something like miles. You have to know the miles per um, gallon for your car. And you need to know um, the cost per gallon. Now, unfortunately, I did this a couple years ago when it was almost $4 a gallon. Um, it would be a lot cheaper now. Um, but you could say, okay, well, you could go for miles to gallons. And once you know how many gallons of gas you need, you could get to the cost. And so depending on uh, your car, you'd have the miles per gallon and the price per gallon. So you could solve this. Um, the only thing you'd have to do is map quest the mileage. It's a really good idea to do this, especially for vacations though. So I just wanted you to see that um, there we go. I just wanted you to see that this is a real world example. I also want you to understand that dimensional analysis can be used for huge problems because if you set it up correctly, you're always going to get the right answer. Um, it allows for your units to cancel. So we could look, for example, if we started with centuries, we could figure out how many seconds there are. We can go from centuries to years, 
From years, we can get to days. From days, we can get to hours. From hours, we can get to minutes. And from minutes, we can get to seconds. And so, for example, we know there's 100 years and one century. We know there's 365 days and one year. 24 hours and one day. 60 minutes and one hour. And 60 seconds and one minute. Okay? And so we could set this up. We have one, two, three, four, five steps. So we have one, two, three, four, five columns, 5.4 centuries. One century is equal to 100 years. One year has 365 days. One day has 24 hours. One hour has 60 minutes. One minute has 60 seconds. And so in your calculator, it's just a matter of multiplying by everything on top. All the bottoms are ones. So it won't really um, uh, you don't need to divide by one. So you have 5.4 times 100 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And you get something like um, 1.7, two sig figs, this is exact, 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 exact. So we can just leave it as 1.7 times 10 to the to the 10, I believe. Um, now, I can already hear some of you complaining, well, there's not 365 days in a year because you're not considering leap years. Well, that's true. Technically, there's 365.25 days in a year. I rounded. Now, if you want to make sure that it's okay, um, we can simply redo all this using that new measurement. So let's do that. 100 years for one century, 365.25 days in one year, 24 hours in one day, 60 minutes in one hour, and 60 seconds in one minute. And if you enter all that in your calculator, where you have 5.4 times 100 times 365.25 times 24 times 60 times 60, whereas this was 1.702 something, this is 1.7. 041, which we still round to 1.7 times 10 to the 10 um, seconds. Okay? Um, it made no difference. It was such a small amount um, of time that it, it just didn't affect it. Okay? So um, when you're considering whether you can round, um, guys, this, this starting number had two sig figs. It doesn't matter if this has three or five, it's still more. So if you want to be more specific, you can. I tend to generally stick to about three sig figs when I'm doing problems for exams. Because if you're close enough where it's only going to be off by a tiny, tiny amount, you're going to be able to determine the right answer. Okay? So always have a plan. Write down the units that you have you, that you're given and the units that you're looking for. And then really work on how you can 
go from one to the other considering equalities or conversion factors you need to know. Um, and then always make sure your units cancel. So like on this last slide, we were very careful. Century canceled, years, days, hours, minutes. If we don't take the time to write your units, I guarantee you're going to make sloppy mistakes and I don't want to risk that for you. So please don't skip these steps. With that in mind, that is it for this unit. Um, <coughs> there we go.